Hi, in our first video we looked at the initial setup of Dynosia Free Software. Now we'll have a look at a few of the features ready for um, the third video which we'll actually do a run. So we have two main screens in the Dynosia Free Software. We have this graph screen and we have this dyno screen. So this is a screen where we actually perform testing. But for now, look at the graph screen. So if we view a few of the features here, in the file menu, we can export data, we merging runs. Merging run is where we have multiple runs and we can join them together to average the test. We can trim, a trimmer run is where we take the start or the finish of the run and discard it. So if we have some bad data at the start due to maybe the centrifugal clutch not engaging, then we can disregard that. Obviously we have print functions, um, in the setup menu, we've already used communications, hardware and software in the previous video. So we have RPM and speed source. We'll discuss this later, but this is where we choose where the Dino Free software gets its RPM from. We have sensor configuration. So this is where if we have sensors attached to Dynertia, it can accept five additional sensors. So it has five data channels, we can set them up. So for example, we can make any channel we want or any calibration we choose, but let's for the first channel choose maybe Lambda. So we can call that here Lambda. Channel two, we might use one of our temperature sensors. I'm using pre-selected calibrations here, but we can use whatever we wish and set it up any way we like. By default, we're just looking at voltages, so voltage. Okay, so that now applies those calibrations. I can filter them as well there and view them, but those apl that applies the calibration to the input channels and labels them. Losses system, we'll leave that to a, a separate session, but that is where we compensate for frictional losses by doing rundown testing when we do the dyno. Here we have trace colors, so we can change the colors on the graph, we can turn the grids on and off. In the view menu, this is where, generally speaking, we're analyzing the data, so we're viewing the data. We might load some data up first of all, so some of this will make a bit more sense. So what we'll do on the graph, I'll load up on trace one, I'll get a preview here, so I can actually click on the preview. So if that's the one I want, let's say I want that one, so right click and it loads it up. So I'll load up another one here, so I'll just click on the number two, so for trace number two, we might as well use run number two. It's a preview, right click, there it is. Number three, let's do number three. Left click preview, right click, loads it. So this screen that's opening up when I'm doing this is called the file explorer. And this is where we can choose and view our runs. We can manage our files and our default folders. And we can see a table of the data. It's also where we can do math channels um, as well. So we have additional channels called math channels which we can create. So actually I'll load number four. I'll load number four with a merged run. So this is actually an average of other runs. Right click, loads it in. So now we have multiple traces loaded in we can analyze. And it's looking a little bit busy here because we have lambda being recorded and we have exhaust gas temperature, and we can turn those on and off if we don't wish to view them on the graph. So this screen is used for looking at those graphs. We also use for analyzing it. So if I choose to analyze the data at the cursor here, we'll say channel three, I select channel three, there we go. So the dials on the left-hand side are showing the data wherever I drag my cursor. I can also click over here in the scales and brings up a little fly box. And wherever I put the cursor, 
it will show all the data as well. So not just the power and torque of each channel, but also the data as well. If I put my mouse on it, lambda, exhaust temperature, case temperature I had in this, when I did this testing, air temperature. So whatever data is there is also displayed in this box, which can also be made transparent. So we can see through it. So if we view, we can also look at individual trace set data. So in this screen, we have a detailed look at a single trace. We have all the data from it. We can turn various, we can turn the power on and off, torque, channel one, channel two. We can turn them off for clarity. We can choose a different run to look at. So maybe four. And once again, we also have by clicking over on the right hand side in the scales, we can bring up this floating fly box, which gives us the data at the cursor. So view, as I said, is where we analyze that data. File Explorer, this just reopens that screen which I opened before where I can select runs or view the data in them. I can compare runs, there's torque analysis screens. So there's many, many screens. So this is area under a torque curve. There's point to point quite popular. Um, that's not so useful, the range there. So let me just I'll save one before. So here we can load up. An RPM point. So what we're doing here, I just loaded up some preset RPM. So I can enter any RPM I choose here, maybe 4,800. So what this does is it compares all of the traces I had loaded in that graph screen, compares them all, and tells me which was the highest between those two points. So it's basically the time it took to get me the, between these two intervals. It highlights the best and the worst out of all of them. So in other words, between this RPM here, 5,000 to 5,500, trace one was actually the best. Yet from 5,500 to 6,000, the fastest acceleration was actually occurring on trace number four. So I can also do this when I'm testing in um, speed mode as well. So these can be kilometers per hour. It's not only RPM. So there are many, many ways of analyzing the data, many screens for that. Once again, that's almost a, a session on its own, another short video. Um, what I am interested in here that is handy for when you're testing is trace visibility. So this is where we can turn things off to actually free up some room on the graph if you choose to. But most importantly, we can clear the graphs to wipe them off completely. So we need to load up some more or we can clear any adjustments that we've made called trims, which I'll show you as well. By trims, we mean I can actually change using these little arrows I can shift up power, I can shift up or down torque, and I can trim off the top of the run. This is important because A, it helps you analyze the data, but B, Dynersia Free prints whatever is on this screen. So I can adjust the appearance of my traces here so that when I do a print, they appear as I wish. We can also bring up any comments that were written about the um, trace in question. So for trace number four, 
it tells me that it was merged from those other free runs, so it was an average. So that data has automatically been recorded there. I can do my own notes as well, obviously. I can also bring up detailed data about any of the tests that I have loaded. So let's say number three, there we are there. I can see my minimums and maximums and my temperature correction. But if I double click on it, it opens up a detailed screen telling me all the conditions, the dates, the times, the correction, the, the temperature conditions, the pressure and humidity, input channels, gear ratio. So all the data that I might choose to, um, to need to view about that particular run. It's quite a lot in the view menu. Graph, I can write notes easy enough. So, and put them on the graph because as I said, it prints what it sees. Um, best engine. Just click on the graph, best engine. And that will appear on a, on a printout. So I can put that anywhere that I like on the, on the graph. and get rid of it. Utilities, we have calculators, scientific calculators, conversion calculators. Basic power to talk calculators. This is just additional functions. There is one that's particularly useful here. I find data diagnostics is probably the key one that I use in the utility menu. Data Diagnostics gives me a view of what's happening on all the input channels. Remember I set channel 1 as lambda, 2 as exhaust gas temperature, and 3 I just left as voltage. So these are what's actually coming in to the hardware. I can view it in units, so in lambda or degrees Celsius, or I can view it in raw millivolts. So zero to 5,000 millivolts. So this channel, this screen gives me a chance to see what's coming in and how it's being displayed. It's good for diagnostics and, and setting up a system, but it's also good we can log that to file as well and run it like a data logger. Um, next to this, we have our help menu, shortcut list, and the main Dynertia manual is embedded in the software as well. It opens up a large PDF file, which has, um, which is interactive, and is the full instructions and full details for all of the software. So on this screen, last couple of things we'll look at here. We've got outputs that we can control. So this is a simple manual one set up here that we can turn on and off. This one here is the time, a four second timer, it can turn off. So it could be used, for example, for a break that can also be automatically set up to activate at the end of a run. This is losses, as I mentioned, we'll view that in another session, but that's for frictional losses of the dyno. We can quickly here also open up a screen to choose our RPM source. So rather than going back up into the file menu, we can do it from here. And this is just an icon that tells me it's set up as an inertia dyno. So in a nutshell, that's an overview of some of the key features of what we call the graph screen. In the next video, we'll be using the dyno screen, this one, and we'll actually perform a test. So look forward to seeing you then. Bye.